Okay, so let's get started. So uh, thank you guys for thank you for your time for joining in the taking in time to join into the session. So in today's session, what we would be doing is uh, let's see how to set up a how to multi-node cluster. Uh, there are, this is kind of a little bit of a, a kind of an advanced thing I would say from a if you are very new to it you might find it a little bit difficult but just try to follow the steps that I'm doing step by step and you can also go through the recording once this is done and you would be able to set up your cluster on your own so you this is uh, this is some, yeah, I, I'm I'm structuring this in such a way that anybody can set up the instances on their own now uh, before going on I have a quick a question or maybe want to check with you guys uh, how many of you uh, well to set the agenda so what we will be seeing in the next one hour or the next uh, 45 minutes is uh, we'll be talking about various Hadoop components and then we'll see how can we do a configure how can we do the configuration on of these various components so as part of this what we would be doing is we would be setting up a three node cluster so when I say three node cluster in in real world sense when you talk about a Hadoop cluster it is a physical grouping of servers so normally you talk about clusters where you say it's a logical grouping on application servers but in here in Hadoop we will be talking about a physical grouping of servers uh, so what as part of this what I would be doing is since uh, since I have to show the demo on a single machine we would try to replicate a real world scenario on on a on a VMs where we would be using a Oracle's virtual box manager so the same physical server that you would see would be replicated on my instance on my on my desktop using a Oracle's virtual box manager now before going ahead so if we can have a quick poll how many of you have heard of Hadoop how many of you know what are the different versions of Hadoop how many of you know uh, have seen Hadoop setup and how many of you are new to Hadoop so just want to understand my audience so that I can set the tone and I can I can see where I can answer or how I can address this uh, Man Manjinder how can we set up scoop in VMware uh, Manjinder that is out of scope of this uh, certain topic right now well certainly I can uh, help you I can talk about that if we get enough time um, so I'll definitely address that if you have enough time towards the end of the session on scoop uh, Wasim is asking can you parallelly the construction in Hortonworks uh, Hortonworks I think maybe Wasim you need to reframe the question you saying can you parallelly the construction in Hortonworks I'm not sure exactly on that uh, Yogesh has a question for a small to mid sized project how many nodes uh, we have well for a small to mid sized project a uh, minimum size of a cluster would be five node cluster that's the starting of a startup that's the best way to have a minimum five node cluster to start off which Hadoop distribution are you going to use for this session uh, we would be using open source Apache the Hadoop version would be 2.71 Yogesh is certified developer perfect wonderful Rishikesh new to uh, Hadoop uh, Swapnil heard about Hadoop uh, Ran Rajit Kumar uh, yes you know Hadoop and cluster setup no okay no problem Manasa Manasha is familiar with Hadoop Shamal I do not know Hadoop but I have set up clusters okay perfect <coughs> Vasim is new to Hadoop, uh, Swapnil again, beginner, Satya Narayana, I know Hadoop, uh, Snehal, but what is the difference between single node and multi node? Can you explain? Definitely, I'll explain that. Uh, Ashima, new to Hadoop. Uh, KP is saying, not able to hear my voice. Uh, guys, can everybody hear my voice? <coughs> Okay, so Vasim's question is, can you parallelly discuss how to construct multi-node in Hortonworks? Well, uh, guys, uh, we are not using any GUI tools here. What we are going to show you is what happens behind the GUI, right? So Hortonworks and Cloudera are the ones which help you to install through a wizard. But what I'm going to show you is what the what is the wizard going to show you 
or what is a wizard going to help you on behind the scenes right so so that is what we are going to tell you but yes hortonworks and cloudera is something which we can cover in and maybe maybe in a far more advanced session but this will be tweaked or this will be uh, primarily revolving around your open source apache hadoop so five node to mid size should be 15 to 30 nodes so uh, yes yogesh uh, you can to start off with a single cluster you say i mean if it's a very small cluster five nodes even a 100 node cluster is not considered as a large cluster even that is also considered as a small cluster because when you talk in real world sense it is a uh, you are talking about thousands and thousands of servers Okay, so others so saying a completed Hadoop course from Edureka wanted to understand more. Perfect, Sunil. So uh, uh, new to Hadoop, uh, Ajay. <clears throat> I'm not having Oracle VM into vSphere. Will will it still work? Yeah, absolutely. If you have uh, VMware uh, flavor of uh, uh, any flavor, see what we need is just a VM player. It doesn't matter whether you whether you are using a VMware player, VMware workstation, or or uh, an Oracle, uh, an Oracle's virtual box manager. So you just need a player where you can simulate a virtual working environment. Sebastian saying doing Hadoop certification in Edureka. Wonderful, Sebastian. Good to know. <coughs> okay, so so I think. Are we? Are you going to use any big data tool? Uh, no, Sopnil. Uh, uh, what is a lightweight Hadoop distribution? Hortonworks, MapR, etc. Well, a lightweight is uh, open source Apache is the most lightweight uh, distribution right now. But yeah. but but you guys need to. I mean, the reason why we chose open source is it will tell you exactly what are the configuration files that needs to be changed and what changes get impacted where. <coughs> Uh, can you share what is the default block size in Hadoop 271? The default block size is 128 bit, 128 uh, MB. Uh, in your in your Hadoop one, you typically talk about 64 MB. In Hadoop two, irrespective of version, it is 128 MB. I know enough Hadoop to be dangerous. Wonderful, Sandeep. That's great to know. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right. So the kind of uh, response I'm getting, I think. Uh, 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 the kind of response I'm getting is that I have people who know Hadoop. I have people who does not know anything about Hadoop. Just people have heard of it. And I have people who have already implemented Hadoop and uh, people who are have, have already set up a one node cluster already. So that's a good uh, note. Good to know that I have a mix of people. So I can start from, from the scratch or from the basics and let you help you understand uh, each and everything. So everybody is on mute right now any questions you have please type into the chat window and uh, please try to keep your question to the point where i'm discussing on a topic okay in the next few slides next five six slides we'll be talking about multiple topics so please keep your question relevant to the topic we are asking so that we are not jumping around here and there so neeraj has a question let me answer this question um, one of the interesting question difference between Hadoop architecture and a client architecture. I think the nearest the question would be Hadoop server, Hadoop cluster architecture, and your client architecture. Well, basically, on your cluster you'll have all the daemons running. On your client you will have the same application or the same package, but you will not have any daemons running. So you just have the APIs. So the communication from the client to, it's a client server architecture where the client will have the APIs. You have your HDFS API, you have your MapReduce API. The communication happens via the APIs. Uh, how will you make sure not, nodes in a cluster are on the same network? Uh, you need to make sure, that's again, uh, you need to loop in, uh, guess, uh, loop in your network team and make sure that how you're building it. When you build a new cluster, it's not an individual responsibility. There are multiple teams involved, except for if it's a small company. So if it's a small company and if you are, if you are a one-man hero, then you'll be doing everything. But... Uh, uh, but that's again goes on the network side on the network switch. Okay, how you configure the network again will be dependent on the network team Can we have set up discussion with three nodes in the cluster? Yes, uh, KP, uh, we are going to talk about that Okay, so 
let's get started. Uh, to start off with, we need to see what are the Hadoop components. <clears throat> Difference between Hadoop cluster and Apache Spark cluster. Uh, well, it's not in the scope of this such an, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, Hadoop cluster is different and Spark cluster would be different. What Spark, I mean, I can talk about a high level view right now where uh, Spark does not use your MapReduce, but I mean, it, it it just bypasses the map reduce, but then the data will be still be residing on your uh, HDFS itself. So that's a different topic. Okay, so just don't want to divert right now. Let's move on and see. Uh, let's stick to the current uh, topics and see what are the core components. So uh, this diagram that we have right now is primarily towards talking about uh, your Hadoop 2x. I mean, we have, I mean, you might be knowing different versions of Hadoop are available. So Hadoop 1, where uh, there are some disadvantages, where uh, wherein you do not have a HA high availability and you have uh, a single job tracker. Now, with Hadoop 2, the reason Hadoop 2 came into picture is because of some of the disadvantages with Hadoop 1, where some of the concerns or some of the shortcomings have been addressed and new features were implemented. Now, now to start off with, for the guys who are new, whenever you talk about Hadoop or whenever you're talking, learning about Hadoop, look into this in two ways. One is storage, the second one is processing. Always remember your Hadoop is entirely revolved around a storage and your processing. That is what Hadoop is an application which is helping you to store the data and process the data. So, so that's how your Hadoop is evolved or Hadoop is revolved around. Now you may have a question, a basic question, or if you talk about a real world use case, take the example of, uh, uh, take the example of uh, uh, an e-commerce website. An e-commerce website, an e-commerce website, you log into any e-commerce website, try to search for some item, let's say a mobile or a, or a digital SLR camera, and you search for an item and you get a uh, listing, you, you hit on one link, and towards the bottom of that, you will see that there are some recommendations saying that people who have purchased this have also bought a different item. Along with this purchase, people have purchased an additional lens. Okay, so you shortlisted a camera, towards the bottom you will see that people have purchased an additional an additional lens with that. So a default camera might coming might be coming up with an 1855 lens, right? So you might go for an upgraded lens also. So there are chances that you might be tempted to go with the majority of the recommendation and you end up buying an additional lens. So that's what a recommendation engine is called. It's called a recommendation engine where Amazon implemented for the first time and they claim that when they implemented the first month they have seen a 30% revenue jump right so the reason I'm talking about this is because we need to understand in a real world scenario what are the cases where Hadoop is being implemented now now how did how did any e-commerce site comes to that conclusion because they have to store the historical data not just one month data they have to store last six months last uh, last 12 months last 18 months last two years last three years when they store the amount of data when they store when they increase the duration of the data there is there are chances that they will get an accurate hit the more accurate accurately predictions can come up right so based on historical information is what the recommendations are coming in now comes the actual problem when you have to store say for example two months data it's well and good maybe it's a one terabyte or two terabyte you can store it maybe if you want to store six months data okay you can store it if you want to store it for the last five years there is a data problem you have huge data there you have big data there that is what the big data is the data for the last five years people who have browsed your website people who have purchased a particular item all this will be composed of the big data so it's a huge data for the last five years now you need to look at a way to store the data if you go with the traditional systems they are very expensive right your traditional storage is very expensive and if you are saying that you want to store the data for the last five years you need to spend a huge huge amount of money to store 
to invest in so many storage servers and then store the data. Now that's where people have started looking at a new solution. Now, now before even going that forward, let's step back a little bit. Once you store the data, what do you do? You analyze the data. You store the data first of all and then you run your analysis. When you do the analysis, what is that you're doing? You are picking out the value out of the data. The value is nothing but the recommendation engine. That is the recommendation. Your recommendation is based on the last five years historical data. So that's where you can get an accurate, accurate prediction or accurate information. The same analogy can be applied. This is just one example of an e-commerce website. You can apply it for your financial side on your stock trading. On your stock trading, the companies gather huge amount of data. So anytime whenever you see a news happening, you will get some accurate predictions saying that the stock is going to go down. The stock is going to go up. How does they come to that conclusion? Because they come to the conclusion based on historical information and lot many factors based on the company's financial audit results. So when you store this data, you have the challenge of storing a huge amount of data. That is your big data. Now, once you store the data, what you need to do is you need to process the data. So when, they, when, the, when the people were challenged with these issues, they looked for a new solution and they came up with Hadoop as a solution which is providing you storage plus processing. Now the storage is termed as your HDFS. Okay, storage is called as HDFS and your processing is called as MapReduce. So the MapReduce higher version is implementation is YARN. Okay, I will explain these acronyms in a short while. Now try to understand what are the core components, your storage and your processing. Why do you store the data? It is because it has some business value to store the data. Now in a competitive world, each company wants to stay ahead of other company. So when you want to stay ahead of others, you need to have more information and come up with good offers or good campaigns. So that's why you store the data and you are leveraging Hadoop, you call it as HDFS, which is Hadoop Distributed File System. Okay, so that's where you store the data. <coughs> now, now, once you store the data, how do you process it? The processing part, you need to process it. The processing part is called as a MapReduce. Historically or legacy, it is called as a MapReduce. Now, with the new version, with Hadoop 2, you are calling it as YARN. Okay, YARN is yet another resource negotiator. Okay, YARN is yet another resource negotiator, which is, uh, which is typically called as MR version 2. MR version 1 is associated with Hadoop 1. YARN is associated with MR version 2 and that's what you call it as MapReduce version 2. So this is just a, YARN is a component which does the resource negotiation and on top of it you still have MapReduce running in here. Now that you understand the storage and processing, now let's understand the sub-components within each. The sub-components within each are, okay, it is a master and a slave architecture. So you have a master and a slave. So for HDFS, you have a master and a slave. For YARN, you have a master and a slave. Now, what is the master component called? The master component called is for HDFS is called as H, your name node. So as a backup for name node, you have something called as a secondary name node, which acts as a backup for your name node. Then the slave component for your HDFS is called as a data node. Similarly, the master component for your YARN is called as a resource manager and the slave component for your YARN is called as your node manager. So it's a master and a slave architecture where you have a single, a single master and multiple slaves. So, uh, okay, so quick questions coming in. Can we process data locally and then pull it on production? Uh, yes, Swapnil, that can be done. Rohit, uh, or YARN and MR version 2, same. Well, MR version 2 is YARN and MR version 2. Typically, you need to understand the YARN framework or MapReduce. So how does YARN 
uh, you need to understand the resource management part so they are closely tied together where the resource management is taken care by uh, resource management is taken care by uh, yarn with hadoop 2 how can you tell again how uh, yarn is different from MapReduce. Well, see, yarn runs on top of, sorry, uh, MapReduce runs on top of yarn. Okay, so, so yarn does cluster management. Yarn does cluster management and your MapReduce runs on top of yarn. Where, because when you, when you do a MapReduce processing, you need to have some kind of resources allocation and that is taken care by your yarn. Standby node, yes, standby node is again a feature with Hadoop 2. So standby node fits into the same place instead of a, if you, with Hadoop 2, uh, typically people use, companies use Hadoop 2 because it has got the ability to do an automatic failover. So with Hadoop 1, there is no, uh, uh, secondary name node is a legacy is a legacy term or a legacy uh, with comes with Hadoop 1. Now, by default, when you're building a Hadoop cluster, I mean, as we do in our practicals now, you will have only secondary name node. When you implement a standby node, your secondary name node will not be available. Okay. So this is the entire architecture of, this is the entire architecture of how you have your uh, Hadoop uh, uh, components. Now, uh, uh, setting up a three node cluster, typical cluster, I mean, when you set up, when you talk about a typical cluster, now you know what are the, what are the components. Now, I think, uh, can you guys tell me what are, what is a daemon? Does everyone know what is a daemon is? Uh, Kulami, can we integrate Spark inside Hadoop cluster? Absolutely, yes. Uh, Spark can be integrated inside Hadoop cluster, that's right. Uh, so I'm just trying to uh, answer, address some questions, guys. Uh, why is data node a slave? Yes, data node is a slave because it's it, data node is where all the data is going to reside. Which Java collection is best to process data? Uh, Java 1.6 and above is what is is supported. So right now it's uh, eight. Uh, JDK eight is available. You can use eight, eight also. What is HBase? HBase is a NoSQL database. It's a Hadoop database. Yarn look like MapReduce library. No, Yarn is different and MapReduce is different. Yarn does only your resource management. MapReduce runs on top of Yarn. Um, that is, does it follow instruction? Yes, Manish, uh, slave node follows instructions from master node. What is the advantage of Yarn over MPP or Map MapReduce? Okay, advantage of Yarn over MapReduce is if you have a data on your Hadoop cluster with MapReduce, you can write only a MapReduce programming. With Yarn implementation, you implement something called as a as a capacity uh, capacity scheduler. So you need to go a little deeper. I mean that's something which you can understand once we go deeper. But but MR Okay, MapReduce runs on top of YARN where the resources are allocated or decided by your resource manager, that is your YARN, which is part of your YARN. Uh, Leo is saying storage plus process plus analytics, these are managed in data warehouse too. Why we need Hadoop instead of ETL tools? Right, storage plus process plus analytics, absolutely Leo, they are managed, but there is a license cost there. You need to pay for license. And and what if the storage? So storage, you are not storing the entire storage, right? So you, are you going to store? I mean, you are you are archiving some data and only storing a subset of data on your ETL because there is a license cost and your disk is expensive there. So once you hit your capacity, you need to discard the disk, go for a new disk, right? But you don't have that problem with your Hadoop where you can expand your size of cluster to the extent that you want. Perfect guys, I think everybody answered a process, a daemon is a process so which keeps on running, a process which is up and running all the time, that's right. So the reason I asked you what a daemon is because, <clears throat> uh, so I have other question. Daemons are like name node. That's right, Manjinder. <clears throat> so the reason I asked for a daemon is uh, 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 because all these processes, all these names you're seeing here are nothing but daemons. Your name node is a daemon. Secondary name node is a daemon. Data node is a daemon. Data node is a daemon on this server. 
So for our practical purpose, what we would be doing right now is we will be trying to have three nodes. I'm not, I mean, three or four nodes, but typically I will have secondary name node running on the same machine, okay, as my name node. And I'll have two data nodes. So one master node and two slave nodes. The same thing will be applicable. This is what is your HDFS is. Now, when I say HDFS, because the naming convention you're seeing is only related to your HDFS, but I will also have my yarn components running in the same way. On this name node, I will have my resource manager. On this data node, I will have my node manager. So in effect, I will be running everything on three nodes. I will replicate a real world cluster on my local machine. But typical cluster use case, if you look at here, uh, you need to have excellent RAM for name node. Hard disk is of not that important. Need to have multi, multi cores. Make sure you have multiple Ethernet interfaces. Uh, go for a 64 bit operating system and make sure there is a redundant power supply. In a, I mean, that is common with a typical data center, right? So you'll have two paths where in case one power supply is gone, you'll have a second power supply available. So that's on the name node and you will have an identical secondary name node. When you are implementing a secondary name node, you are saying that this is a backup for your name node. So the configuration of your secondary name node should be exactly identical to your name node. Now, coming to the slave processes, the RAM is not, not that important here, though the processes run here, the RAM is not that important, but your disk is very, very crucial because this is where the data is getting stored. So you can have multiple, multiple, multiple disks of uh, two terabytes or multiple disks of small sizes. Then your cores, okay, Xenon with two cores and make sure there are Ethernet, inter multi inter multiple Ethernets, multiple Ethernet interfaces and also go for a 64 bit OS. Uh, one other caution is always make sure you have a uh, you have a homogeneous so software across all the machines so that you can have it's easier to debug or it's easier to maintain as an administrator. Do not have heterogeneous. Well, you can have CentOS, you can have Red Hat, you can have Suzy. All this mix of variations you can have, but it is suggested that you have a single flavor of OS running on all the mach all your machines. Okay, so Shamal has a question. As per your slide, you're showing a 64 GB. Well, Shamal, that is again, the metadata need to be held in your uh, uh, name node. That's why you need to have more RAM. Uh, that's why you need to have more RAM. Puneet has a question. Where is the volume, velocity, big data, and not in warehouse? License cost plus no scope plus vertical horizontal expansion. Answers to uh, Puneet, wonderful. Uh, I think you summed it all. So what is the function of secondary name node, Puneet? Second, uh, the function of secondary name node is to act as a backup. Okay, so <clears throat> can we have secondary name node and uh, name node on on different nodes? Yes, you can. Uh, you can have it on different nodes. Name node looks like looks after reading and writing data from data node. That's right. Suppose I want to configure hundred node cluster. Same way I can do any other or any other configs required. Yeah, you can do. So I'll show you the steps where I can. Sh I will show you one step on setting up a master node and a step on multiple ways on setting up your slave nodes. The same app thing can be applied to almost all your nodes. Okay, irrespective of one node or a few five nodes or a hundred node, you can follow the same process. Just need to have your Linux skills. Make sure you can push it, push the same code or same config files across all the machines. What factors need to be kept in mind uh, while setting up name node? What amount of data and how much RAM and cores are needed? Right, Neeraj, uh, that's a good question. So uh, uh, that again depends on how much your company is going to invest and how much you're how much uh, uh, how much you're going to how much uh, I mean capacity, how much data is going to come in, and also whether it's an I/O bound or a CPU bound. Okay, so I/O bound is what amount of data you store. CPU bound is what amount of processing you do. Whether cluster is going for more CPU bound or more I/O bound, that again, so all these factors will need to be considered. Um, Puneet is asking, does it mean automatic failover? Well, secondary name node does not do an automatic failover. Only the standby node will do an automatic failover. So 
it is not here on this uh, slide right now but you typically talk about standby node which does an automatic failover um, I think MapReduce processing will happen on absolutely MapReduce will happen on data node where you have a node manager running is the configuration for how many nodes this is a, the configuration that I am doing is for three nodes so uh, Abhijit yeah Satyan uh, we are doing try to do it on a real world uh, configuring a real-time environment exactly uh, yes Abhijit please go ahead and shoot your question uh, no Abhijit unfortunately you cannot uh, uh, speak we cannot unmute you everybody's on mute so you need to uh, type into the chat window uh, I'll just wait for you to finish typing so in the meanwhile I had where does name node store FS image and edit logs in if in hard disk then why need more RAM uh, like uh, in three node cluster when we store any file on HDFS how can you identify that on which node it's being stored yeah uh, Manjinder what happens is the metadata will be written to two locations one is onto the disk and the second one is onto the name nodes RAM so you need to store it onto the name it, it gets loaded onto the RAM so that's why RAM is very important to the, to the second question yes there are a lot of tools available with Hadoop where you can upload it a file and you can query your file system and try to figure out on which node that particular block is going and residing Swapnil's so, question is automatic failure causes main node to get failed no automatic failure is where if your name node crashes for some reason with this secondary name node you need to have manual intervention and bring it up but with your uh, with your standby node if the name node crashes the standby node will be automatic failover you have two ways one is you can do a manual failover the second one is you can do an automatic failover but without losing your data so Avishit is asking I have one machine in Ubuntu and two machine in Raspberry Pi yes you can uh, uh, you can configure absolutely no problem why do we need two data nodes right so yeah I think most of your questions will get answered guys so I mean just just hold off for some time okay so uh, if name node cannot get all metadata info does the information get spilled onto disk if the name node cannot accommodate metadata that's where you hit the capacity of your RAM or your your meta your metadata RAM is uh, capacity is hit and you cannot upload any data into the cluster okay all right so let's let's start with uh, let's start guys so I think most of your questions will be answered as we do the session so uh, uh, some of the configuration files that we need to look into uh, is uh, uh, well I mean I'll explain to you so your Hadoop ENV SH, your YARN ENV SH, your code set XML, HDFS, MapRed, YARN site and your slaves file. So what these files are and what these are all I'll show you in a short while. So for steps for creating a Hadoop multi-node cluster first thing is a Hadoop is a Java based framework need to make sure your Java is installed okay uh, need to make sure your Java 1.6 and above is installed or JDK uh, your JDK is needs to be uh, above 6 and uh, and Hadoop need to download Hadoop package now the next point to talk about is specify the IP address of each machine followed by their host names in host files right so so this is required because the nodes will be there will be a lot of communication happening between the nodes the data node will be talking to the name node name node to the data node a lot of intercommunication keeps on happening every now and then very very often so for that communication to happen the nodes should know each other either you can add it into etc host files or you can rely on a DNS Okay, normally you will have a, a primary DNS and you have a backup DNS so make sure your DNS is properly configured if you don't have your DNS configured then have your ETC host file set up properly the next one is configure your so download set up your IP addresses then configure your Hadoop configuration files and then you format the name node and uh, and you can check the UI so this is the steps that I'm going to show you in the next uh, few minutes okay let's go and start and uh, let's do that all right so 
uh, in my case, what I'm showing you here is I have NN1. Okay, typically I do a lot of demos. So NN2 is uh, where I do a second a standby name node where we show HA demo. Okay, where we talk about HA. So I am not, I have started only NN1. Then I have DN1, DN2 and DN3. So NN1 is my name node. Okay, so where I'll have, uh, look at this here. So what I'm building a cluster is master daemons will run on my name node. So can you guys quickly tell me what are the master daemons? So I have a HDFS and I have my yarn. So what are the master daemons for HDFS? The master daemon for HDFS is name node. And the master daemon for my yarn is resource manager. And my slave daemons will be running on my DN1 and DN2. Now also here I have my slave daemons. So HDFS, my slave daemon is called as a data node and my yarn daemon is called as node manager okay so this is how this is how my my cluster would be structured around uh, where i'll have three nodes one is a master node and two slave nodes so uh, right now what i have is on my machine i have a centos installed so this is a centos here instance so you can see uh, uh it is c this is a centos uh, uh, release 6.7 is what on my machine right now. So I will be my practicals are all uh, Surrounded around this Now the first thing is make sure you have your working Java version in installed. That is important So just try to see you you have your Java version Make sure your Java version is good. Okay. This is the same thing on all the machines. So so okay now I'll be toggling I'll be switching between multiple machines so keep an eye on this one where it talks about my host name this is my host name nn1 so I have two other hosts dn1 and my third host is dn2 okay three nodes so my nn1 will be my master my dn1 and my dn2 will be my slave processes where I have my slave nodes running so this is how I have structured it. The IP address NN1, my master, and my two slave nodes. Now, uh, what I did was I also had a DNS setup so I can easily ping, okay, ping my DN1. Okay, your ping should work and your NS lookup should also work. Okay, your NS lookup should also work. So if I say NS lookup to my DN1, that should be working. So it should come back with my uh, lookup, okay? So you need to have your forward zone and your reverse lookup zone. So if I give up my NS lookup of IP address, it should be coming back with a resolution. So if you do not have a DNS setup, the alternate way is you can go inside etc host file and make the entries in here. Okay, etc host file, make the entries in here where your local host will be pointing into local host right on that machine and the rest of the mapping should be done here so my dn1 is also pointing in my ip address and my full qualified name the fully qualified name so the fully qualified name is what if i say host name right if i say host name this is what my fully qualified name is so here it is only showing my host name and my fully qualified name is anything after your host name my cluster2.com is my fully qualified domain name so I'm, I'm I made sure that my communication is happening between my name node and my data nodes. So if I ping DN2, it should be communicating. Okay, I should get a response. So this is what the first check is, and then I verified my I verified Java is installed. Okay, that's I'm not going to show you how to install Java. So uh, so your Java is already installed on here. The next important thing is download your Hadoop. Okay. So download your Hadoop. Where do you download your Hadoop? Typically, uh, you can go into uh, open source Hadoop. So you can just say uh, Hadoop download.
uh, choose a mirror site always go for a stable version so this will give you almost all the versions available always go for the stable version of of the stable folder because that's where you have a stable version because others may have some bugs in there which will be fixed in stable so this is the version I'm downloading just click on this this will download a tarball so the same tarball is what I have here this is the first step in your Hadoop cluster setup okay now let me bring this to the top of the screen quickly uh, I now the first thing this is what I do now Just trying to see. Okay, let me let me remove this. Uh, uh, let me remove this. I have a soft link created here, so let me quickly remove this, and then remove this folder as well. So I have tarball downloaded. The next step is to untar it. So how do I untar it? Tar hyphen zxf. Okay. Yes, uh, this would be uploaded to uh, YouTube post uh, the end of the session. So this is right now uh, untarring it. So similarly, I will do it on my DN1 also. I have the tarball here. So it is taking some time. ZXF. And on my DN2 also. So once I untar it, what I will have here is I will have this folder created. You see here, I don't have a Hadoop 271 folder. Right now, when I untar it, I have it Hadoop 271 folder created. Now, if I go, want to go inside that, I need to say cd Hadoop hyphen 2.7.1. I need to type everything. So to avoid that, I will quickly create a soft link in here. I'll quickly create a soft link. How do you create a soft link? ln hyphen s. You give the folder name and then you give the soft link name. Now if I say ln hyphen l of Hadoop, this is actually pointing into my 271. So this is the first step I do, create a soft link. The reason I'm creating a soft link is tomorrow if you get a newer version, you can simply unlink it and point into that particular link. Okay, you can just map it. Now let's go inside your Hadoop location. See here what all files and folders you have. So this is your directory structure of your Hadoop package. So this is nothing but your Hadoop right now. So this you have downloaded the software and you have installed it. The next logical steps would be to configure it. So where do you configure it? Where do you have the configuration files? All the XML files we just saw on my slide are available on in my etc folder. Within that, I have a Hadoop folder, and within that, I have all my XML files. These are all my XML files where I need to configure here. Now, now important XML files that I need to be concentrating on are my core site XML, then my HDFS site XML, then my MapRed site XML. Okay, so MapRed site XML is not be there, so you'll have a template file, and then my yarn site XML. So these are the important various configuration files I need to have. Now if you open these files, all these files are empty. When I say empty, look at this configuration here. In between configuration, you don't have anything. So that is what when I say it's an empty file, so you don't have any configuration. Now this is what is a standalone mode of installation is. Okay, so this installation is called as a standalone mode where I can execute my HDFS commands. HDFS DFS, if I say HDFS DFS and uh, uh, hyphen LS of, let's say here, now my I'm, now I'm executing my Hadoop commands. Where am I executing my Hadoop commands? On my local file system. I'm executing the Hadoop commands on my local file system. So this is what would be your, uh, your, your local, your standalone mode of installation.
right because it is giving me it is giving me the output of the same files so this is your standalone mode of installation now building upon this we will start with our multi cluster mode multi node setup so first thing i need to do is open my core set xml within this configuration tags is what i need to add a property the property that i need to add in here is available here so copy this property value it has a format okay the property has a format where you open a property and within that property you have a name the name of the property is fs.defaultfs where you have an ip address okay and then a port number so i am defining where my hdfs is running my master my master hdfs is running and i end the property tag so this is the default conf i mean minimal configuration is what i'm doing so that i can quickly start my cluster and i save this file there's a first step then my hdfs site xml in my hdfs site xml is also by default it's empty it's empty by default there is no configuration in there now what i do i'll go ahead and make these two entries what these entries are the first entry talks about dfs dot name node dot name dot dir this indicates where i am running or where i am having my name nodes metadata being stored so i need to give a disk location this is my disk location this is a disk location where my name node metadata is being written similarly i have a dfs dot data node dot data dot dir which indicates where all my data nodes data will be residing so all your blocks will go and residing in this directory location so these are the only two properties i am giving in here let me save this file now i need to make sure the directory structure is created so i can simply create that in a single one go okay mkdir hyphen p i'll create the name node directory similarly i'm going to create the data node directory also okay once my data node directory is created one other thing you need to remember is you need to make sure the permissions on your data node are 755 okay 755 or the permissions on your data node so your hdfs site xml is done the next thing is your mapred site xml so as you have seen there is no mapred site xml by default so you have a mapred site xml template so make a copy of this xml file into mapred site xml and make the entry into your mapred site xml so one property i need to add in my mapred site xml is what is indicating what is the framework it is going to use typically with hadoop one you will have to define where is your job tracker is running so but here i am not running any job tracker here i am running i am running yarn okay i'm running on top of yarn so that is what you're indicating in here so you are indicating map reduce dot framework dot name which is your yarn so save this file the next important file is your yarn site xml where it is also by default it is also empty so some of the properties that i'm going to copy right now are required property or required properties so these properties i add in here okay so my yarn set xml is also done and once my yarn set xml is done save this file now once i saved all my property files the next step if you go back into your presentation the next step is it talks about edit the slave files on master right slave files on master so you have something called as a slaves here which will contain a list of which will contain a list of servers that are to run as your slave nodes. Now, I know that as part of my initial configuration, okay, I am setting my DN1 as my slave node. So I will insert my first slave node, then my second slave node. My second slave node is my DN2. Get the IP address and add the IP here. So I save the slaves file here. Now, one thing to remember is with Hadoop 2, you will not have a master's file. 
only with Hadoop one you will have a master's file because that's where you're going to configure your secondary name node but with Hadoop 2 by default typically companies will do go for Hadoop 2 is because they want to have a standby node rather than a secondary name node so whenever you're implementing a Hadoop 2 implementation you should definitely have a standby node now these are the configuration files I'm done okay now I'm ready to start my cluster right so format the cluster so format name node and start all Hadoop services so it says format your cluster but before I format hold on what I need to do I need to make sure my slaves are also having the same configuration files the slave should know which is the master how does a slave know the DN1 how does the DN1 know that it has to it has to act as a slave for your NN1 so what you need to do you need to make sure you need to make sure create a soft link similarly with what you did with Hadoop 1 and copy the XML files into your slave node so that's what I'm going to do in the next uh, uh, steps so first thing create a soft link here ln hyphen s point it to Hadoop so do the same thing here on your DN2 also if I say Hadoop oops it is pointing into my 271 now for me to copy the XML files what are the XML files I need to copy I need to copy the XML files my important XML files I showed you here right I listed down my core site my HDFS site my map red and my yarn site so what I will do I'll just do an SCP so SCP core site XML and my map red site.xml then your yarn your HDFS site XML then your yarn site XML copy this into what into my DN1 home slash edureka slash Hadoop slash etc slash Hadoop and copy in there that is onto my DN1 the next one is copy this into my DN2 also just come to your DN1 and verify the files are there so go inside your Hadoop inside this etc inside this Hadoop so you have your XML files right so these are time stamped right now so now I know that these are my latest files okay just copied so the same will be copied onto your DN2 also now one important thing I need to do here is because I am having my data node this is my data node I need to create my data node structure I don't have to create the data node structure on my name node I think I created on my name node here so you don't need to do it on name node if you are doing a pseudo cluster then yes you can do it on name node but I don't want to have my slave processes running on my name node so so I'm not giving it on my name node so I need to create the directory structure on my slave one first of all mkdar hyphen p and I'm creating the data node structure and ch mod 755 for this directory same thing we just execute the same thing on your dn2 as well and ch mod 755 for this particular directory okay so you're all good right now so the next step is it says uh, edit slave files on master node format the name node and start all services so the first thing you do when you purchase a new hard disk or a new computer is what you do you format it now that I I'm new to Hadoop I don't know what commands to run I just run HDFS okay I just run HDFS this gives me a listing of all the commands I can run here the first one is name node hyphen format so I will leverage the same thing I will say HDFS name node hyphen format so this is where it is formatting your cluster your name node typically so what does a format do typically when you format your hard disk it will create your inode entries it will create tables all those things the same thing is being done right now now make sure you're seeing this message 
make sure you're seeing this message storage directory has been successfully formatted you remember this is the directory we have given on your HDFS site XML where your H, uh, DFS dot name dot name name dot name dot this is the uh, this is the value to that property so your format is successful the next important thing is start the instances so how do you start the instances so we go by two starts one is a start your DFS dot sh So this is starting your name node. Yes, uh, so what is happening here is it is automatically logging into your slave node. So you need to set up SSH keys. Okay, so that is something which uh, I already done before the start of it or else it will keep on prompting you to enter the key in the password every time you do this so you'll have the secondary name node starting here because I'm not using a standby node because I'm not using a standby node I will obviously have my secondary name node on the same machine where I have uh, where I have my name node running so this is taking some time guys so okay so to verify if the processes have started or not I just do a JPS and I see that my master nodes are up my name node and my secondary name node now log into your DN1 and try to do a JPS JPS is what JPS is a Java process monitor Okay, JPS is indicating it's a Java process monitor and try to do a JPS on your DN2. So the data nodes have not started here. So let's quickly look at how to troubleshoot this. So I have my master nodes up on my name node, but my, it's, they're not started on my data node, right? So what could be the reason here? The reason could be because, uh, let's quickly look at the log files. So where do you have the log files? You have the log files on your Hadoop install location. So this is typically what you can do as a troubleshooting step. I have I should have cleaned it up, but I did not clean it So where it says that Okay uh, Data node all specified directories or failed to load so it is not able to start the data node process here Right, so there is a lock in here. Okay. There is a lock in here on your uh, Edureka Hadoop data node 2. So this is acquired by node Okay, so this is not been acquired properly. That is because the cluster IDs are different. So let's quickly overcome this. How can you overcome this? You can go inside home, Edureka, then uh, Hadoop store, HDFS, then your uh, uh, data node two, right? So you already have some information here. Just remove this metadata. And then now, now that I need to do some kind of a troubleshooting start the processes individually so how do I do that individually Hadoop hyphen daemon dot sh start my data node process now if I say JPS here my Java process monitor will indicate to me my data node is up so similarly I will do the same thing in my Hadoop store um, Hadoop store then uh, you have a HDFS data node 2 I have something else here previous I have the I have the uh, ID from the previous I have the metadata from previous cluster which is available here which I'm just trying to remove right now I have removed it and then I'm starting individual process daemon dot sh start my data node while the data node is starting here come back into your name node and start your yarn daemons yarn.sh okay so let's come back into your dn1 here so I am on dn1 right now do a JPS so your data node is up here do a JPS your data node 
and your node manager should be up here okay so here it says uh, here you see the message it says node manager is running 2594 2594 was from a previous uh, uh, I mean we can we can start at looking at troubleshooting this okay pipe grep for your 2594 so it is I mean, the process is not running, but there is something which you can uh, explore, try to see what's happening in the back end. So let's quickly try to access the GUI here. 192, 168. So you're accessing your, your uh, GUI name node GUI admin on port 50070. So guys, uh, I know we are short of time. Uh, just give me two minutes. Uh, we should be able to see the setup here. Okay, so this is what will show you uh, in, in effect the cluster setup in total configured capacity is my 36 GB and I have my two live nodes. Okay, two data nodes which are configured in here, whether I can go from here and see what are all the nodes, my DN1 and my DN2. So two nodes set up for my cluster. So this is how you build a multi-node cluster and uh, start working on this. Okay, so uh, typically you can also run a Hadoop DFS admin report. You can do a HDFS DFS admin hyphen report, uh, which will give you the same message or the same uh, uh, details as your name node user interface. Now you may have a question why we're accessing on port 50070. So what will happen here is uh, every process, every daemon has an associated port or an associated web service running in. Okay, it's a small web page or a JSP page runs associated with each and every process. So for example, on name node, it runs on 50070. On your resource manager, it runs on, it runs on port 8088. Your resource manager user interface can be accessed on 8088. Similarly, your uh, your data node can be accessed on port number 50010. So various ports are associated with each of the processes. So this is what it is showing. The same report that I showed you from my name node UI is what it is showing here, my configured capacity and my live nodes. So I have two live nodes, DN1, okay, and DN2. DN1 here and DN2. So, so this is how you set up a multi-node cluster. And I think as part of this, I'll show you how to troubleshoot also. I mean, we got an opportunity to look at the log files. So the log files are always located into the location where you have your Hadoop installed. Well, you can change the log location. You remember in our Hadoop PNV.sh we talked about within that file is what you can change the log location and the process identifiers, everything. Now, uh, uh, to come to the course, uh, uh, there is a there's a batch coming up on the weekend. So uh, for this uh, 7th November, so we have it like 24 hours uh, in total, 24 hours module. I mean, over a period of uh, four weeks, uh, eight classes for 24 hours, we cover, go in depth into it, understand how to set up, how to set up cluster. I think some of you are asking how to set up a password, let's key SSH. Everything will be showed to you each and every step. Okay, so we are short of time right now, so that's why uh, I cannot go into each and every topic. But as you, I mean, I mean, as we go through these sessions, uh, you can definitely, I mean, be assured that we will definitely show you each and every step, and we'll explain to you how to troubleshoot, where to look at the log files, where all you can check, and how to bring up an instance up and running if they're not coming up. Okay, having said that, let me ask, let me take some questions. Uh, I think a lot of questions came in. Uh, Okay, so what is mean by name node format? Well, Manjinda, that's how you format whenever you disk, whenever you format your cluster or your hard disk. That's how you do with the, the format. Uh, to create cluster on local machine, are we going to make changes in the etc folder? Uh, so if you are creating on your uh, uh, standalone mode, no, then you are not going to make any changes to your etc folder. Uh, 
Do I need to install MySQL as a prerequisite? No, Shubash, uh, you don't need to install MySQL, but yes, if you are doing with uh, uh, Cloudera installation, your MySQL is important. Then, other questions I hear is, uh, what do you mean by client in host file? Yeah, client is again uh, my client machine. So I have a separate machine configured here where uh, where I want to have it contact with my uh, cluster. So the client is anything, uh, any client which contacts to my cluster. Does not the ETC host file, the public IP address should come first? Uh, well, it doesn't matter, uh, Puneet. Uh, you can have the IP address, uh, just that mapping should be there. Swapnil is DN1 and DN2 are different machine. That's right, uh, Swapnil two different machines. Uh, how you're accessing NN1, DN1 terminals from your single machine? How will you come to know in which HD, IP HDFS is running? Yeah, that's again, you need to look into your course at XML, uh, Jahar, uh, sorry, Jahar Chagi. So uh, you need to you need to go with, uh, uh, or else you can actually look into your, uh, uh, look into your uh, name node uh, UI and figure out where your name node is running. Swapnil, I'm getting confused with name node and data node definitions. Can you explain data node and name node with example? Well, obviously name node is a master node and data node is a, uh, is a slave node. Name node is where all your metadata is stored. Data node is where all your data will go and reside. That's your slave node. Uh, what if you have to run MR1 and MR2 on the same cluster? Well, Nitin, uh, MR1 and MR2 on the same cluster is uh, is not a requirement. I think it's uh, typically you have MapReduce one applications re written in MapReduce version one, which you need to recompile when you run on MapReduce version two. But I don't think uh, there is any use case where you have both MR1 and MR2 on running on the same cluster because any application that you run for MapReduce version one can be run on MapReduce version two. That's what you call it as a backward compatibility. How do we know all what all configs to be set in different config files for setting up cluster first time? Yeah, first time I think uh, it's a, it's an unwritten rule you can say what all configuration files you need to make. So you need to make sure that whatever files I have I have set or whatever properties I have set or the requisite properties. Where can you configure standby node? Yes, standby node can be configured in your HDFS site XML. You need to add a property DFS.name services, which will indicate where your standby node will be running. How can we access another cluster from another machine? How can you access another clusters from another machine? Uh, typically, I think your question is how can you copy the data between uh, different machines. So there is a tool called uh, DiskCP, which is a distributed copy, which will copy the data from one cluster to another cluster. Will no, name node format the whole data in your disk? Uh, well, Manjinder, the format will this the format name node format will do what? It will format this particular location. Okay, so this particular location where you're specifying where your storage directory is, where you want to write your metadata. Only that disk or that location will be formatted. What is the RAM and disk space that has been allotted, allot, allocated to these machines? Well, Samuel, I have allocated one GB RAM for each of the machines and about uh, 20 GB hard disk. And uh, we are using native OS file system on our HDFS. Can you use OS raw disks on your HDFS storage? Well, no, no, Nathan. So OS should be different. So it's always good to have, if you have multiple disks, segregate your OS from your HDFS so that they does not interfere with each other. Guide me in setting up Hadoop. Well, definitely already you can uh, enroll here. Uh, we'll definitely guide you. Uh, as block size is configurable, then what will happen if block size is less than 64 MB or 128 MB? Well, Neeraj, uh, if the block size is less than 64 MB, say for example, if I have a 100 MB file, how many blocks will I have going by 64 MB block size? I'll have two blocks. One is a 64 MB, the second one is a 36 MB. So don't confuse this block size with your Linux file system block size or your Windows file system block size. 
because there is no corruption or there is no padding happening for the rest of the uh, for the rest of your 24 bytes okay 24 mb so it will be 36 mb will be a block size we haven't set up the replication factor it is default to 3 now that's right uh, uh, rajit it will be default to 3 as a computer engineering fresher can i go for absolutely vishal you can definitely go for this um, uh, can we gather some sample data and process it? Yes, I think uh, we are almost on the time guys So I know I want to appreciate each and everybody's time. So just give me five more minutes. So uh, we should be able to wrap up uh, uh, Do you mean job tracker and task tracker dummy uh, daemons doesn't need to be installed if you are absolutely snail uh, if, if you have uh, if you have Hadoop 2 running you have yarn running then yeah You don't need to install job tracker and task tracker because it's all taken care of. In, in the map reduce again will be whatever jobs you are submitting will be in turn Okay run on your yarn framework. Okay, so it runs on top of yarn. It, it is inbuilt into yarn so when you start yarn your processes your APIs also will come in so Krishna I am Java, a Java developer with eight year experience can can this can take this course and pursue career absolutely Krishna I think ad, developers will have far more advantage because they can understand the internal concepts right so if you want to debug an issue because it's a purely a Java based application so you can understand uh, I mean go inside and well, open up your APIs and figure out what is happening. So that's the easiest way to understand. Rajit has what if the replication factor doesn't match with the number of slave nodes? Will that okay? So yeah, Rajit, that's a good point you brought up. So it's always good practice to have the number of nodes in your cluster should always be greater than the replication factor. If you go below that, you will have a problem there where uh, where the data if you have let's say the, for example you have three X replication and three slave nodes and three X replication will make sure what three copies of the data is copied to three nodes and if you bring down one node the master will try to replicate one other node to some other node but you don't have a some other node you don't have three nodes you have only two nodes so there it will get keeps it tries to keep on copying it so good practice is to have the number of nodes should always be greater than your default replication factor or the replication factor you have set. Uh, Leo, Hadoop version 1 daemons are not running in version 2. These are overwritten by, yes, absolutely, uh, Leo. Okay, uh, the how to get the IP which you typed in the browser. Uh, that IP is this is a IP address you have allocated here. So this again, um, again, you need to you need to go inside deeper into this IP address which I picked up. How to manage compute and how to take care of storage with replication factor and what type of switches. Uh, uh, Puneet. Uh, I think how to manage compute and how to take care of storage with replication factor. Yeah, so you have you need to go with the default properties. So right now, if I don't use any properties, the default uh, values will be taken. The replication factor will be three, and the block size will be the block size will be 128 MB. So if you want to override these default prop default values, you need to explicitly call out that property in the respective file. Okay, uh, how can I add more node in the existing cluster and can I use uh, two name node in one cluster? No Manjinder, you cannot have two name nodes. So when you say two name nodes, it should be one should be in master and second one would be a, uh, sorry, one will be a active node, the second one will be a standby node. Uh, Neeraj, yes, if you have 50 MB block size, then yes, it will occupy only 50 MB on your, on your, on your actual cluster. If you have 50 MB, then where will, Will there be any? No, there will not be any slow processing. Uh, thanks, Puneet. Uh, uh, thanks for your appreciate your words. It's good. How about me? 15 years in transaction. Wonderful. I think uh, you beat my experience, Puneet. Uh, I'm just uh, 12 and a half year experience. So I think it's good to know that people are learning. But yes, it's a new technology and uh, you can absolutely learn. Any reference book for admin? Yeah, there are a lot of books are available. Uh, how many nodes? Uh, what configuration nodes? Uh, yeah, we'll as part of this, as part of the course, we do have one session dedicated to 
uh, the cluster configuration where we talk about how to how to how to decide on what all uh, uh, what all uh, nodes to take and how much how can you define decide on uh, your your cluster capacity planning uh, the question is what is zookeeper quorum or do we using any zooker concept in Hadoop 2 yes Manjinder zookeeper is uh, okay so zookeeper is what is kind of a gatekeeper the reason zookeeper came into picture is because we are talking about uh, uh, we are talking about multiple nodes in the cluster and it's a distributed file system there are chances that you end up into race conditions where you have locks because resources needs to be need to be properly properly distributed across and resources need to be shared across multiple machines so to avoid running into these race conditions and avoid into multiple issues you have a zookeeper implemented there so that's kind of a gatekeeper which will handle all your client requests appropriately and route them properly uh, I think the last question I will take is where to route where to configure the application factor the replication factor will be configured on your uh, uh, HDFS site XML DFS dot replication so guys uh, hopefully I think uh, uh, this I will I hope this session is helpful for you guys okay so try to uh, uh, try to I mean uh, uh, this video will be uploaded uh, soon after this in a short while onto YouTube so you can go through that if you miss anything just follow the steps uh, I did uh, uh, maybe you can you will be able to uh, uh, you will be able to uh, set up your own cluster but there are some steps which uh, uh, because of uh, uh, there are some steps which uh, I think I have done before uh, because of time limit in there uh, uh, so so just try to go through that and uh, you should be able to set up your own cluster any questions you can always go back to uh, reach out to us uh, any queries concerns yes the YouTube link will be shared uh, in a short while immediately after this session okay hopefully I hope this is a uh, this is helpful for you guys please provide your feedback and also try to go through the uh, course uh, uh, reach out to our support uh, we will be able to guide you appropriately on, uh, on the course modules and uh, how it is being showed to you okay so as I said it's a uh, there's a batch running on this weekend so try to uh, uh, I mean try to come as soon as possible it's helpful for you guys for us also okay thank you and appreciate your time you guys have a great night and a great day talk to you soon hope to see you very soon yeah definitely uh, Puneet I'll, I'll, I will have uh, support reach out to you okay all right then so thanks guys and uh, bye bye talk to you guys very soon